that was what we were talking about in Sunday school about giants. We get comfortable in giants. We, we hide under them because they're our comfort zone. We present them before everybody else because we feel that they're a comfort. They will cover us. So we are cling to something that is not for our good. My good was a comfort zone, was being in the apartment that I needed to move out of. But I was comfortable in it because this was my mindset. Well, this is my mama's place. My mom been here for a long time. I was even making it to the assumption with my mom basically owned the building. I had to talk to myself. And I was like, okay, well, mom don't own the building. She just stayed in the apartment. So you need to let it go. Because somebody else bought the building. So now it's in their hands. So I have to let this thing go. That was a comfort because it was a central location for people to keep coming in, going out. You're kicking them out, they come right back. Mm -hmm. Kicking them out, they come right back. Kicking them out, come right back. It was a comfort and central location. So I had to first make up in, this, in my mind to make a change. And see, that's what happens when we don't make weak, when we don't decide to make a change. We think that it's going to change by us staying in the same place. And going around in the same circle and expecting a different outcome. And he said, move. I was like, okay. So I moved. And I moved with my dad. Now, me and my dad have never been in the same place, in the same house. Only the time that happened was when I was four years old. I'm 32 years old. Amen. And it was like, first of all, it was this was something that we was excited, but I was also it was like shaking because it's like, okay, I'm, I'm with my dad now, and we, our relationship is great and stuff like that because our relationship is building, but we've never been in the same roof before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, God, where I was talking to my dad, I was like, God, I was like, Dad, it's like it's really hard for me to keep up with the apartment. And be able to, I won't be able to maintain it, do what I want to do because I'm still paying out. Everything's going out, but nothing's coming back in. So he said, shift move. I talked to my dad. He's like, no, that sounds like a plan. So I moved with my dad. And then things begin to still. I'm like, okay. Now you said move. Then the job goes away. They ran me off. Talking about changing your position. I'm like, now, first of all, hold on. I didn't move with my dad to be independent. Right, 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 right. I'm talking, this is me and the Lord's conversation. I was like, first of all, I listen, you said to move, I move. But I didn't become a dependent on my dad. Because first of all, the reason why I did choose to move, because he had to move somebody else out, which was my sister. And I didn't want to move in to make it seem like I'm kicking her out. So that's why I stayed longer in my comfort zone. When it was being shaken up for you to move. He was shaking up things for me to get to an understanding and a place, okay, to trust him more. But I'm like, I'm comfortable. Come on, mm -hmm. yeah. And as, as in men, we often get comfortable in a state because our mindset is thinking of a rational mindset, a state of looking at what we can do now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And having facts of being able to do what we're able to do. Mm -hmm. So in that, so I moved and we moved in. And I told him, like, like that, they don't lay me off. I'm like, okay, God, you got to help now because I know my dad. <laughs> I'm like, I know my dad. Now, I know where the place that he's at now, I'm understanding, but I was like, I know he's still looking for me to be the man. Come on now. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Amen. Amen. So I was like, so you still got to help me. He was like, it's uncomfortable. I was like, yes. He said, good. I was like, hold up. <laughs> I said, hold up. I was like, nah, first of all, I was like, I wasn't there when you said you parted the sea, the firmament, and said it was good. I wasn't there when you said that you called all the creepy crawly things and the fowl of the year, and you saw that was good. You said that was good. You said you prayed to he, him, them, and all them, and you said that was good. But I'm saying this is not good. <laughs> But he said, it's uncomfortable. I said, yes. He said, good. I was like, maybe we're not understanding each other. But everything is not adding up to where 
it needs to be added up. I know one plus one is two, and two plus two is four. But it seems like I'm, things are constantly divided, going into a negative. Yes. I understand. Come on. But he said, I said, but I said, God, I do not come here to be a dependent on him. He's like, I know. He's like, because he depends on me. So that's why you're here to get understanding of changing your mindset that you need to trust me more. Wow. Wow. Your faith has to come up even more. You talking to everybody else. Uh -oh. So uh -oh. now this is your season to go through uh -oh. what you have to go through. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Shut up. Jesus. See, this is the thing that we really don't like at times to come in grips with when God is changing, telling us to change and move because it puts us in an uncomfortable state, meaning that we have to rely on him more than we have before. So that's why he is doing this order thing now. This is an order set up right here. Every man that came through Greater Works was set up from the beginning. Because this is the reason why we were set up. Because we came under a leadership that has a mindset of, of trusting God. And then has a mindset of understanding to know where men ought to be. And has no, no, no shame, no, no problem of pushing us into the place where we need to be. Because of the simple fact we need to be in our rightful positions. Because in that there's authority that comes with it. Yes. Now looking at me like I'm crazy. He is raising up men that are seeking after his heart to, to proclaim and declare the authority that he has given. Yes. See that's why we can't be waving, we can't be unstable, we can't be this and that, but we have to stand flat footed and declare what God is saying. So I should be in a charge when he had me to read our Father which art in heaven. He was telling me, refocus, look up to me first. Everything starts with me. Everything begins with me. Everything ends with me. We have to be in the mindset to look at him first. He is Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end. You have to be in the mindset to be like, okay, God, what? Direct me. Lead me. He's like, okay, good, because you're trusting me. As men, we, we, we like to be uncomfortable when we have a control over it. And then when it gets out of control and we don't have control over it, we're frustrated. Uh, uh, there you go. Yeah. There it is. Well. And we begin to prick and kick and do all this other stuff and then shoot out. Yeah, come on. Instead of reevaluating within. Yeah, come on. Oh my God. You got this. So he told me this is a restructuring process for you and a reevaluation of understanding who you are. Because the simple fact. Men, it is, it is important for men to be in the rightful place in their rightful position. Because of the simple fact, there's a validity that comes out of your mouth. There's a validation that comes out of the mouth. When a child is born, it is prevalent that a man need to be present there. Because they solidify their destiny. There's something within a man that corrects everything it blocks everything. It directs everything because of the position that you hold. Yeah. 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 Now, true enough, some of us at a time may not have that father, father relationship, things of that nature, but there's one that's been there from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing of it is, we get upset because we are putting them in the place of a natural father. Yeah, right. So true. Because he is not meeting the needs of us where we are right now. We can't touch him. We can't see him. But he's been there the whole time providing for you, looking out for you, sending things in your way that you, that needs of a help to you. But we push him aside. Because we have a limited, we have limited to because what we see. So he was like, no, this is, the, this is a training time. That's why a lot of us is uncomfortable and upset and frustrated because our direction is off. He said, Our Father, which art in heaven, you need to be looking up. Look to the hills yeah, yeah, where your, your help coming yeah, from the Lord. Yeah, so yeah. that's where our direction needs to be. Yeah, we don't want to look that way because we need something right now. I need something right now because I'm looking for microwave um, situation <laughs> resolutions. I'm looking for something oh. quick because I need it quick. I need it now because I want it now. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, I'm so glad you want it right now, but guess what? It ain't going to work right now. Because when we try start to do it, then we get upset when we do it, and it falls apart. We add up everything that we think that, oh, we got this, we got 
this. He's like, okay, good, go right ahead. You got it, and it falls. Yeah. Because he said, that's not what I had in store for you. That's not what I had planned for you. So our minds have to change the direction of focus. Everything has to start with him in order for it to be successful. It has to start with him. It has to. It is a must that it start with him. So in, in this, we were saying man up. Man ought to be up in the front more praising him and God the Lord never before like never. Shaking the walls because there's an authority in them that God has given them. And the reason for it because he has placed it in you for you to speak and declare. This is now that now season for the men to manifest God's glory in the earth. Let thy will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. I have placed in you my authority to declare in them in this in this realm to bring forth a change like never before. We need to stop patty caking and playing like mm. like we gonna let them do it. We let them do it. They got it. Let them go for it. And they get frustrated because they didn't you then start critiquing. Yes. Uh -huh. uh -huh. And he's like, no. He's like, I've been I've been trying to tell you this from the beginning to go forth and do this, but you were loving, you resisted. I'm talking also about myself. You've been resistant and stubborn because no. Wow. Uh -oh. They got it. Mm -hmm. They good people. Mm -hmm. They 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 can do it. He's like, no, but I have called you to do it. Go ahead. Oh, so in this, I'm learning. Of course, I had to laugh because it, it was also evident today when we was at, out in Go to Corral and we was introducing ourselves to a certain people. <laughs> and I'm, yes. <laughs> and so we had to, <laughs> and so we had, we was introducing, but it was a need for it with an understanding that we ought not to be ashamed who God has called us to be. Amen. Now listen, it doesn't, it doesn't mean the fact that I'm not afraid to say the prophet. But a lot of people always are quick to throw that out because they want you to be impressed with their title. Right. I'm not called them in okay. title, I'm not called them in a position. I'm called them in certain right. right. And so that's why I often be like, say my name first because that's who he has called my name. Yeah. Right. Go ahead. He called me by ahead. my name first. So that is why I always present me first, because the office will come along with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, in this season, that's why he's raising a man to declare the word like never before. Cry loud and spare not. Because we ought to, when we see a demon come up, it ought not to, we ought to be running and, and hiding behind mm. a bush or something. Uh -huh. But we ought to be flat-footed and stand up face-to-face -face and let them know, like, look, you don't want to mess with this. <laughs> this is not trying to be of an arrogant, but this is of a confident right, who you are and what God you serve. Yeah. Because if, he, if I'm not mistaken, he said, I am Alpha and Omega. So everything has to fall subject unto him. Right. And if he reigns within me, then everything has to fall as subject unto me. Yeah. All right. All right, all right. Because of the authority that he has placed. This is now the season for the man to stand up in authority. Yes. It's now time also yes. for the woman to stand up in authority because there's a linkage that works together in the kingdom. All right, all right, brother. Because that's why the, it, we listen. We often try to always put it on the enemy that he's constantly putting up division. But let me help you. No, he's not. It is us that's constantly yes. putting yes. up division. Yes, come on. Because of the reason of we have our isms and schisms. We don't have confidence within ourselves. Okay. And then we can see other people move and oh, stuff like that. We get frustrated and upset and jealous. Oh, and then we want to be like, oh, see, they think they all that. Well, the reason why they all that, because they're moving and being obedient to what God is saying. So if you was obedient in the first place, you wouldn't have to worry about what somebody else is doing, what they're doing. You're focusing on what God said for you to do. And a move in your way when he said move. See, we all, see, so he's pushing me, he's telling me, don't, don't, he's like, just say it, say it, deliver it, and leave it. Don't get comfortable, don't try to look at their faces, don't be trying to, oh, how should I say it, because they, he's like, no, it's time now to cut them. It's time now to cut, because in 
in your in your cutting, you're healing. Yes. And so he's charged me. So I'm charging this for all that have to come up after me. Your fire is lit now. Uh-huh. 
karate chop. <laughs> Our one and only, Prophet Quan Ashley. Come on, let's give him a hand as he Jesus. Oh my God. The thing I have to 
but the thing is, oh my God, the thing is, because I, I, you know, this is a question that I've had. I say, Lord, why, why do I, why, why aren't the men in the church? Why am I having problems drawing them to the church? Why are churches around, all around, everywhere having problems drawing men to the church? He said to me, he said, that's because the the, the men mm -hmm, are crying out. Oh, Jesus, which is the name of my little portion here. Men are crying out. Now see what we're, oh Jesus. I'm talking about they crying out, even if they're not in the church, even if they don't know who God is, even if they're back in a backslidden state, they're crying out. Okay, because this is, see, we, we cry out in our actions. We cry out in our emotions. Jesus, come on. And we crying out in anger. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to talk about the men here. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Jesus. And see, that anger takes the form of abuse. Yeah. Uh, First of all, we refuse it ourselves. Because uh, we're not standing, we're not even who we are, who we are, who God said we are. Mm. Nor nor are we Jesus, even, even trying to be uh, anything like Christ. Yes. And, 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 and it also, the abuse also filters out to the others around them. Wow. Mm. Okay. See, this is because men have an identity crisis. Uh -oh. Okay? See, the, minute, the, the position of the man has been diminished in society, in today's society. All right? And even in some churches, I'm, I'm just saying that. Even in some churches, it's not just in society. Okay? We have to get back to the man's position in the Bible. Oh, Jesus, for the rocks are crying out. Jesus. The rocks are crying out. Oh, God, because they're crying out. Mm, Jesus, okay, amen. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Jesus. our position and we're crying out in our hearts. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We're crying out within ourselves. Oh God. We're crying out. Oh Jesus, if you just listen. If you just listen, you can hear it. Yeah. If you just listen, you can hear it. Jesus. They, Jesus. Even when we're not screaming, ah, we're crying out. Ah. Yeah. Yes, God. We're crying out, Jesus. Am I perfect, Jesus? Am I, and when we're crying out, see, we cry out and we aim it at the wrong place. Uh -oh. Jesus, I aim, come on. I aim it at my wife to cry. Uh, you know what saying? Yeah. I aim it at you, come on, come on. my cry. Uh, I aim it at you, my cry. Uh, when they ain't where it's supposed to be aimed at. Uh, that's my purpose here today is to change where we aim in that cry. Uh, the Lord said to cry out uh, unto him, unto him, uh, unto him. Jesus. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> now that we know where we're headed, let's talk about getting there. Okay? Since most of us, since most of us men are not, amen, as, as my brother before me said, poured into as a youth, okay? Okay. We don't we don't offer it to today's youth. Uh, because because we didn't get it. Uh, we 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 Jesus, we're deficient generation, Jesus, simply because of what we weren't given. Mm. Mm -hmm. And it isn't, it isn't until we come into the knowledge of Christ. It isn't until when we're up, we're up, we sit up under the true unadulterated word of, of God that that change can come. That God can make, that God can, 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 oh, Jesus, can overcome that which has not been given yeah. by man. Uh, yeah. Jesus, I'm going to get back to that in just a minute here. This is when we turn to God's word for guidance. This is when we have a focus on Christ. Oh, here we go. Good God. All right. We have a focus on Christ like Peter. All right. In Matthew 14, verses 27 through 33. All right. Amen. Uh, allow me to paraphrase it. It says that, you know, this is when Jesus was on the water. He was walking on the water. <laughs> Uh huh. And Peter said, "If it's you, bid me to come." Yes. Okay. And he came. But you know what? 
He wasn't talking to Peter. Jesus wasn't talking to Peter. Mm. Jesus. What, he, what, what, what Jesus was talking to, he was talking to himself in Peter. He was talking to himself in Peter. He wasn't talking to Peter because Peter ain't nothing but flesh and bone. That's all Peter is. Oh, Jesus. Peter can whoop your butt, but Peter can't walk on the water. He's talking to himself in Peter. That's right. Oh, hallelujah. Because he knows what himself can do. Oh, uh, my God. So he said, come on, Peter. Come on, self. Walk on the water with me. Come on. Let's go. And it wasn't until Peter, it wasn't until Peter got a hold of, wait a minute, in flesh and bone, that he began to say, Oh, Jesus, what are you saying? What I'm saying is, people of God, especially men of God, we can't talk to the men before us. Because, see, there are times in men's lives, and, and I'm a living witness of this, that you can't talk to me. That's the truth. <laughs> amen. I knew I'd get an amen somewhere. <laughs> you can't. You cannot talk to me. Don't try it. You're wasting your time. Yes, God. Amen. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I ain't the only one, but I'm gonna put put me out there. But you can't talk to me. So the thing is, Jesus, you got to do me like Jesus. Talk to the Jesus in me. Talk to the God in me. That's when Jesus. That's when the movement comes. Uh, if you look in the Word, and Peter didn't move until Jesus talked to Himself inside of Peter. Because if not, he could have did that. He could have did it all on his own. He didn't have to be. He didn't have to ask Jesus to come out and walk on water. He would have did it if it was in him. If he, if it was Peter, he would have did it by himself. But Jesus was talking to himself, uh, and that's what we have to do in the body. We got to talk to the God in one another. Uh, forget about the flesh. I don't care what it look like. I don't care if you like me. I don't even care if you love me. I gotta talk to the God in you. Oh, <laughs> Ooh, me. That's the only way I'm gonna that's the only way I'm gonna be able to speak to you and get a response. Yes, God, yes, God to God's life and, and he can get the glory. Oh hallelujah. Oh hallelujah. Yes, God. Mm, mm. And I hear you. I say I hear you saying it, you know what I'm saying? How do you speak to the God in a man that won't hear you? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, amen. I know you do. Praise the Lord that you know how to do that and very capable of it. Amen. Size 13 and all. Amen. Oh, man. But in order for the rest of us to do this, that don't wear the size 13 right now, all right, you, you must first stop looking at the flesh and focus on God and his purpose. Amen? The only way you can do this is by first having your own personal relationship with Christ. Uh -huh. All right? Secondly, you have to allow God preeminence in your life and take and, 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 and take control and handle the situation. And that's a thing right that's a who God. That's a whole bit right there for the men. Oh God. Allowing God to have preeminence and handle the situation. I've been handling things since good Lord, since I could touch something. I've been handling it. Oh, good, bad, or otherwise, I've been handling it. Jesus, Jesus, and to have and to come into the kingdom of God, and He said, "Quan, you, you, you can't handle it. You can't handle it. You, you, you didn't did that. Look where you are. Oh God, look what you lost mm, because you tried to handle it. Uh, and look how long it lasts because you tried. Oh, hallelujah." Oh, hallelujah. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes. Jesus. See, let's, let's, let's talk about the place of the man, okay? In Ephesians 5, verses 22 through 33, amen, we know that we know it speaks to who the man is in the family and his responsibility. Mm, 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 mm. And you know one thing that gets me? I don't understand why in the world do people think that only punks go to church? Men that go to church are punks. Why? 
Why do they think that? Do they actually understand? That? I don't believe they actually understand or comprehend what it takes for a man to go to church, to be a, to be a Christian. We ain't talking about the tithes. Yeah. Let's just say, let's just start that. Just to be a Christian, just to live up to what God calls him to. That ain't easy. Ain't nothing about it easy. Oh, Jesus. See, mm, 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 mm. see, see uh, and I found this news flash. Amen. Because I used to do this too. Help me, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You can't accomplish this responsibility by beating your chest. You, you, you can't do that. You, you, you can't accomplish being <laughs> the head of your household. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Leading your family through thick and thin, beating your chest. Oh, Lord. Jesus. Because they've been in their norgy in a minute. Oh, yes, God. At least I know in my house they would. Oh, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. See, in order to accomplish this, this comes by doing opposite what, the soci what society and your life circumstances taught you. Amen. I, you know, I found it strange when I came into greater words and the Lord told me I had to change your entire thinking. Oh, God. Because you know what? I thought I was right. I came into the kingdom like, I'm right. I'm right. I don't care what it is. I'm right. But he said, I got to change your thinking. So, what? You mean all of it? All of it? You mean all of it? Eight? Yes. Eight? Right, right, right. Oh, right. Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. See, now y'all see why it's so hard to write. Mm -hmm. See, this comes by doing, okay, amen. All right. Mm. See, there's a, <laughs> there's a, a, a term that I, this is a term that I made, that, that metrosexual male, uh-huh, that, that society has, is, is, is uh, bringing up. Now, the metrosexual male is, where, is, is one of the ones where God has very limited influence. Okay, that I'm, I'm just describing right here. The metrosexual, all right, is one is one that uh, that that gives, that views God as some distant entity who has left us to our own devices. Okay, he believes his his success is his own doing. All right, see now a real man he knows he can do nothing without Christ. Amen. Right. Not only knows it, but he believes it. Yeah. Mm. Jesus is one. It's one thing to speak the word of God. It's another thing to believe it. It's, it's one thing to repeat it. It's another thing to walk it out. Oh, Jesus. See, see, Jesus. See, they, they heed the wound. Yes, God. Yes, God. Jesus. No. Mm, mm. Yes. Amen. 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 <laughs> Say a real, yes, God. They heed the word of the Lord in Matthew 20, verses 25 through 26, where it says, whoever wants to be great among you, let him be your servant. We're talking about a real man. Because we, as men, we love competition. So, you know, we want to be great. It's just like in the Bible. With, uh, it's just like in the Bible. They was asking, who's the greatest among us? Competition. Ain't nothing changed. He's still the same way. Uh, but the word of God says that the, the greatest among you, let him be your servant. Let him be your servant. Oh, Jesus. Mm. And see, the thing is, yes, God. God was dealing with me with this word punk. And I said, you know, God, I don't know what the word punk means. He said, no, look it up anyway. I said, okay. I said, a punk is a worthless, unimportant person. Amen. He's weak or ineffectual. Mm. Stupid, rebellious, careless, disrespectful, lazy, uncouth. Mm. I said, Ooh. 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 I said, okay. <laughs> that now brings into some new knowledge here, Lord. Mm, mm, mm. Jesus. Lastly but not leastly, mm. man's one of men's problems of why they're not in the church, so to speak, is they dealing with the uh, the battling the religion of masculinity. Okay, the religion of masculinity. This is everything that they do from work, hobbies, entertainment, um, our addictions is designed to prove to the world he is a man. Oh, Jesus. They just, wow. His religion also demands he avoid anything that might cause question to his manhood. 
And that's what they think about church. Uh, Jesus. That's one of the reasons they, that they use not to come. Jesus, when I talk to my people, when I talk to people that I run to come into contact with, and I speak of church, and I speak of and I speak of the Lord, and I speak of uh, coming together as men. Oh, Lord. You can hear a pin drop. Mm. The ones with the loudest, biggest mouths are the ones that don't have nothing to say when the, when the, when the, when the subject of Jesus and salvation comes up. Wow. I, mm, okay. Some, some think that this includes church because most men think of church as something that women and children go to, not men. Okay, we still talking about the, the religion of masculinity here. All right, there's a thought that if you become a Christian, you must give up your manhood and become a punk. I don't know where they got that from. Jesus, <laughs> being a Christian and working in the church for us men goes beyond the building community. All right, and nor is the only position available in the church for men as a pastor. Uh, that's not the only position. Good God, and some men. In some men's mind, church is nothing more than a ladies' club. Uh huh. Uh huh. They use it as that. Yes, God. Go pick. I, I know. Yes, God. I know them to come like that. Mm. Some of them want to come when I talk to them. They ask them how your women look. I'm like, they're looking at Jesus. What you talking about? <laughs> how they look? Oh my God. But anyway, but I know they they won't last because they're coming for the wrong reasons. Jesus. Oh God. They come. Mm. Amen. Religion of masculinity. Men don't go to church, Jesus, like they don't wear pink. Uh, neither is considered manly. Rough and tumble men don't fit with the quiet, introspective gentlemen who populate the church today. Uh, they, Jesus, Jesus. Because they think that we ain't nothing. They think that we've been saved all our lives. They think that we don't know how to gang bang. They think that we ain't never smoked nothing. We ain't never drank nothing stronger than Kool-Aid. Oh, hallelujah. They got this misrepresentation of who a Christian is. See, most men go to church most men that do go to church were brought up in the church, amen? Oh, yes, they do. Uh, but you know what? I was brought up in the church and didn't go to church. I didn't go to church for years till I met my wife. Oh, yes, God, because I found that good thing. Oh, hallelujah. It is what they know. All right? Jesus. But see, the thing is, they overlook the Bible. If you look in the Bible, we talk, they got real men in the Bible. Oh, God. They got manly men. They got the rough and tough man. They got the men, Jesus. They got the man that will stand up and, they got the man that will stand up and say no more. No more. It shall be no more. It's Jesus. Man, we talk about men in the Bible like Moses, Elijah, David, Daniel, Peter, and Paul. All of these men had two things in common. They had an intense commitment to God, and they weren't religious. Oh, mm. So heavenly bound, they were no earthly goods. Oh God, see, see, that's what I want. Oh, Jesus, I, try, mm. I when I meet the people and I talk to them, uh, I try to meet them where, where they are, uh, where they are. Yes, God, so a lot of them know, a lot of them know of me, a lot of them know of my calling. Mm. Uh, but yet still I don't lord it over them Jesus but I come to them where they are and say yeah yeah I, I know exactly what you're talking about because I did that just last Thursday okay, come on. Come on now. truth be told come on. I did that last Thursday with my saved self what you talking about you can't be what oh come on now men get distracted with the cares of the world and lose interest in spiritual matters <laughs> Jesus I got bills to pay, I ain't got time. They get they give they they, they offer an overtime on Sunday morning, Pastor. I ain't gonna be here next Sunday. Oh, Jesus. That's what we say. God knows where men should be, but he starts where we are. <laughs> See, that's another thing that we have to do. We have to start where they are. Where they where their where their belief, ah, Jesus, where their belief stops, uh, that's where we should be. Where their faith ends. That's where we should be. Yeah. God, yes, God, yes, God, yes, God. Church mm -hmm, is sweet, sentimental, nurturing, and nice. Women thrive in that atmosphere. 
A sweet, sentimental, nurturing, nice church. Yeah, they, they thrive in that. But, but men don't thrive so much in that. Amen. Uh, I, and, I, and I appreciate it. I'm not, and I'm not putting that down because we need that in the church, y'all. We need that. That's the feminine spirit. We need that in the church. Yes. Amen. But we also have to have a balance. We need the feminine spirit and we need the masculine spirit. So the masculine spirit, he's a, he's a, he's a, he loves competition. He loves to be challenged. He loves the risk. He loves the, the, the rewards of, of going and doing things. Jesus, Jesus, that others wouldn't do. But yet still the man, the real man, goes and does that and acquires that thing. Mmm. Oh, all under the guise, Jesus, all standing in God's righteousness, all standing in who he called him to be, the man of the house, huh? Uh -huh. the head and not the tail. Yes, God, yes, God, all doing that, all doing that. And that's what draws men. That's what's going to draw the men. Uh, we have to make the word a challenge. Uh, we can't just speak the word. We have to make it a challenge. Mm, Jesus, so when we... Jesus, Jesus. So when we say, yes, God, and that's what I try to do when I challenge the man. Mm. When I talk to them, they tell me, you say, yeah, I know about God, yeah. I know he said, yeah, I'm saved, amen. But I'm like, okay, well, if you save me, you know about God, what, what you doing? Where you, where your church you go to? And they give me that long, drawn out church with the rabbit and after that, you know. First guy put cross cross I'm like, okay, amen. Well, when's the last time you been there? What? Uh, you know. About 18 years ago. Amen. But I'm, so I'm saying to him, I'm saying, I said, okay, but I said, I understand you want to, you, <laughs> it's like they want to compare churches with me. <laughs> it's like, a, it is, and it is like, a, they try to get me to the competition that their church is better than mine. But I tell them, I say, you know what, it don't matter whether your church is better than mine. My whole point is not to compare your church to mine, but to compare Jesus, but to compare you to the Word of God, but to compare you, excuse me, to the Word of God. Whereas, Whereas the word of God is, is when it's preached unto you, is no more a word but a challenge. I'm challenging you to come back uh, home, man. The word is challenging us to come back home. Not to be out there just making babies when things get tough. Deuces. We gone. It's time out for that. He's calling a real man to stand up in the family and pray. Stand up in the family. Yes, God. Yes, God. Stand up in the family mm, 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 and live as and, and live and live as some and live and live the call. Live the life as, as a man that you can stand that can be stood up and looked up to and not ashamed of. Uh-huh. And not ashamed of. Mm, Jesus. I asked my father, I said, you know, I was looking in my line. Oh, Jesus. I was looking in my, 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 my blood line because I said, I said, Lord, I'm going to have some problems in, 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 in this area. And I wanted to find out what it was. I asked him, I said, well, I said, well, um, I, I know something about you. Hey, Amen. But I ain't going to talk to you about it because we be arguing. Mm, and I'd be having to call pastor to come bail me out. But uh, I said, is anybody in my family, the men in my family, are, are they hoes? Or were they hoes? And he said, well, you know, he was talking to me. Well, you know, well, then we wouldn't, I wouldn't consciously call them that. Uh, you know, they just, and I'm like, come on now. It's just you and me on the phone. Be honest. It is what it is. I want to know where this stuff comes from. That I'm messing with. Come on. We got to be. We need to be honest with one another. We got to be honest with one another where we come from. I did Jesus. I went, I came from a house that the, that my mother took me to church, but then went home. So I'm standing at the door like, okay, what you saying? God for me ain't for you. I'm I'm I'm, I'm twisted right there. How that work? You know what I'm saying? And then God helped me if I didn't go in there. And she found out, oh, it was on. But I was twisted, I'm telling you. Mm, mm, mm. But Jesus, Jesus. Yes, God. So, but, mm, mm, mm. All right, amen, amen. Man, if we want to draw man to church, we must speak of the challenge to follow Christ. 
Okay? It's not just up to the pastor, amen, but it's also up to the lay people to foster culture a person to person challenge. Uh, yes, Scott, ooh, I'm going to tell you right quick. Everybody know, well, most people know here, Pastor Danny, amen? And he's a good friend of mine. Uh, and the thing is, the thing I bring him up is because I challenged him. Mm. He used to come in every day talking about his knees and how sore, sore and how hurt they was, how he couldn't walk, this, that, and the other. I looked at him and I said, you must like pain. Mm. You, you really, you, you must like the pain, dude. So he looked at me like, what you talking about? I said, you like the pain. I said, could do. You messing around. Your surgery free. Your, your relief, your relief is there, right there in front of you, and you don't want it because you're scared of it, but yet still you're going to complain to me about some pain. I told him, I said, you must like pain. Every time he came in, how you doing? How your knees? Oh, man, my knees are, you must like pain. You like that pain, don't you? It must feel real good to you today. Amen? Until one day, this man of God went and got the surgery. That's right. He got the surgery, and the man of God ain't talking about no more hurt knees now. He's walking around here. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. See, I think that's an example, yes, God, of how we need to be with one another. That's an example, hallelujah, of how we can cause one another to grow in the spirit. Oh, hallelujah. I ain't going to say I do that all the time. But when, Jesus, but when I do, glory be to God. That's my that's my goal is to increase that right there. Ah, Jesus, that's when the man of God, that's when the, uh, some of our few men of God that we have aren't here, uh, aren't here. I, I, and when I see them, I speak to them. I say, what's going on, man of God? Why you ain't here? Why you ain't here? Don't I do it there, brother? Amen. Why you ain't here? We, I need you. What's, what's up? What's the real thing? See, it's, a, it's, it's a, oh, Jesus, it's an accountability that we as men of God have to stand in. We have to, it is, you know what, we, we, we can, amen, I hear you. We can't run away from it. Thank you. We can't run away from it. Yet still, <laughs> shall we stand, shall we stand in it? Come on, sir. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. I know he is. <laughs> and I don't want to tell you. I'm talking about it. Oh, Jesus. We're going to rewind that part. <laughs> oh, take my, I remember that it said it. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. See, challenges just can't come from the pool. Amen. Yeah. We need to get back to discipleship, which is people leading each other to maturity in Christ. All right, man, we have to stop viewing church as a prostate exam. Mm. Oh, that was crazy. That's how we view it. I'm going to just be honest. As a prostate exam. It can save our lives, amen, but it's uncomfortable. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. Do I do the next verse? I'm so proud of you. Amen. 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 Our next minister right now coming up is Minister Brian. Amen. Our keyboard specialist, Jesus. Some other men behind me, but 
I'm going to leave a little piece of ground left, okay? Amen. But what I need you to do, first of all, we cannot uh, receive a word from God and we, we, we have not walked into the word that God has given us prior to this day because we have so much hatred and unforgiveness in our heart. Come on, bro. Uh, the problem is, um, we, 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 we pray, God, send the men in the house, send the men in the church, God, send the men, send the men. And these are the women praying. I'm not talking to women. I'm not a woman hater or nothing like that. But since this is the men speaking, God is saying, how can we I bring men into the house when women is still bitter? Said, I, I, I'm not bringing a bunch of men into the church to come and play daddy to a bunch of women that want to be wives. I, I, I never know. Uh, the problem is, we got a lot of people uh, want to play the roof role, uh, but you're acting like Queen Vesta. <laughs> Not, let me just say, I'm just trying to break the ground because I'm not, who is he to come here and tell us this, that, that, that. We're going to have a nice time. Uh, but God said, don't release the word yet because it's a lot of people in the house, man, female, boy, and girl with so much hatred. And what happens is every time a word gets spoken, every time somebody prophesies, every time that they praise, it just go up and come right back down wow. because of they remembering their past. Wow. They're remembering people that hurt them. They, they got so much hatred, so much bitterness, so much unforgiveness. And it has caused the people to become depressed. And it's so much word that God wants to give you. So much doors. So many doors God wants to open. But your depression has caused you to stay at the same level you are. I got, so if you could just do me a favor, and I know I got a little bit of time, and I'm, I pray to God, Lord, I don't want to be a two-hour preacher, an hour 45, because really the truth is people only are here the first 15 minutes anyway. Yeah. So if you could just do me a favor, and I'm going to release this word, just go to three people. It don't matter who you go to and just say, forgive me for everything I've done to you. It don't matter. It don't matter what you've done. It don't matter. Amen. Come on, praise God for your leader. Praise God for Pastor Lady Rose being in the house. Amen. I'm gonna release this word and then we're gonna I'm gonna get out of here. But Apostle Lord told me to tell you that he's getting ready to expose every influence and spirit that's around you very quickly and very soon. Uh, God said, uh, the reason why I have to expose them is because some people don't mean you no good. Yeah. And we hear this often time, but what happened is, he said, I had to allow them. The question is, why, God, do you put these people in my life, Dan, if they don't mean me no good? Yeah. The reason I had to put them in your life is because I had to make your enemies come closer so you know how to ah. deal with them that love you when they mistreat you because a lot of us have dealt with so many enemies we don't know how to have the true friends when they deal with the enemy done but they're not trying to do it Just, just, just go to your Bibles, Isaiah 55, and we're going to roll from there. Men of God, I don't know your name. I don't know uh, where you're from, but God told me to tell you. I heard that you're from California. God told me to tell you, when you go back home, every situation, every uh, thing that was a disaster before you came, and when you go back home immediately when you land, things is just going to start turning instantly. Uh, God told me to tell you, he said, I'm going to give you favor with councilmen. I'm going to give you favor with mayors. I'm going to give you favor with your governor. I'm going to give you favor with every landlord, everyone that owns a property around you. I'm going to give you favor. Even the preachers that you tried to reach out to that mistreated you, they closed their doors because they did not understand your vision, did not understand your purpose. God said, I'm going to reopen up doors because the truth of the matter is they only closed their doors because they did not understand what you was going. But now they need your wisdom. They need your understanding. God said, you have a strong anointing for men. And what happened is the Bible said uh, over in Timothy, said, let no man despise thy you. And I've seen your child that has been a lot of men despised you. A lot of men wasn't around. And you tried to figure out, God, how can I be a 
father to others when no one's right. a father to me. And God said, who can be a better father than I can? So when you go back home uh, uh, to California, wherever the city you at, when you go back home, mark this word. You can take this one to the bank. You can take this wherever you want to take it to. God said everything is going to chain around and favor is going to be your best friend. Favor is going to be your portion. And God told me to tell you he's going to give you favor and he's going to renegotiate your building too. Now, understand, uh, uh, men of God, and I, I, I just got to be me, this is a setup for your life. Uh, the Bible said that he gave Adam dominion over the fish of the sea and over the air. And he gave Adam, just this point blank, I like how the message Bible said, he told Adam to take charge. And what happened is the enemy, if he could keep our mouth closed from taking charge of what God has given us and what God has put in your life, you can stop and block what the women are holding up now. Now God said to this, he said now, if I can get the men back in their respective places, I can lay a little burden off of the women because the women have been carrying a load too much. If you, I do a lot of research on my radio show. We have to do research on different things when we do a show. And the truth of the matter is we have a lot of single black mothers that's raising up kids and their kids now, come on, you ain't watched the news enough to understand it. Uh, and within these past two months, we've dealt with over 80 murders of young black males. And the reason and why it's not because of the men in the church. How can the men in the church go and take care of them when they don't know their position in the church? And the problem is, the men have been battling with their position and battling who they are because the women have been in authority for so long, they're scared to give back to what never belonged to them. It was only for you to hold it down. So, oh, come on. The Bible said that a sanctified wife sanctify the husband. And I just want to tell anybody in here that if your husband is not in the church and if your husband is jacked up from the floor, you knew it before you married him. So now you got to endure just for a little while because God said, I my word when it will return back unto me, boy, and I'm getting ready to turn your whole house around. Uh, but God said, are you willing to give your husband his rightful position when he comes? Uh, the problem is, do you really want people to be saved? Do you really want your husband to be saved? Uh, are you just something you want to do because it's a church shenanigans? Uh, God, I'm trying to move real fast here, but I promise I, uh, to at least six of y'all that's married in this room, God said, I'm getting ready to make your husband the real king. Uh, y'all better watch up. God told me to tell y'all, uh, y'all, wait, 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 if you ain't, if you married in here and you over 35, I just want to tell you, college career is done and over with. Uh, you ain't got time to go back to school. You ain't got time to try you a job. You ain't got time to try to get a degree. God said, I want to supply in your man. Uh, so many women is praying, you're married. How you married? And you have petition in God. God said, I set the man in the court. It's his job to come to me. Uh, your job is to go to the man and tell the man, baby, I need this, I need that. And our job is to pray with you, steady petitioning in God. shortly. Uh, women, you have to understand that this is a woman that birthed the king of kings into the nation. Uh, you got to understand it was a woman that went to the grave shop to go and prep him and prepare him. Uh, you got to understand women of God, it was a woman that rubbed him down with oil and wiped him with his hair. Uh, you got to understand people of God, it was a woman that was at the way. Uh, it was a woman with the issue of blood. Uh, so it does not mean that you're not validated. It does not Yes, you have authority, but God said, I told the man to have dominion. Uh, God's job was to come and save. Save from what? Save from disaster. Uh, because if the enemy came to Eve, it's because Adam was out of position. Uh, Adam was, oh, y'all better give me something. Uh, uh, God would never take them out of the garden. The uh, only reason why they got out because they were hiding from God. Uh, so I believe the thing scared you in here. I got to take you out of what scared you and place you somewhere else. Uh, my job was never to take you from Adam from out of the garden. But my job was to simply say, 
here. Why wouldn't you let this man come and take your position? Brother, you gotta watch her be the brother. Should no other man tell your wife how beautiful she is? Should no other man tell your wife how good she looks? I tell my mother, they tell them how they tell you you're beautiful. Watch their eyes. Watch how they look up and down. Because should no other man give you more accolades than your husband? And if you ain't getting it at home, you better keep on praying and for God. Show her what to say. How the Bible said here. He said, When men get back into their grateful place, uh, women of God, there will be no need for you to buy anything with your own money. Uh, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> you should. I'm going to conduct myself because if I come on my jacket, we're going to have a party. All right, let me listen. God told me to tell you this. Don't you trying to play with me?
husband. If you ain't got a husband and you need some stuff to come quickly, go to one of these women that's married and say, can I just borrow your husband for one moment? And just go to a man of God, can you pray that I need this and that? And watch stuff just start coming simply and quickly. The Bible said to me, he said that I know the plan and the thoughts that I have for you, and they are good and not of evil. And if it was never, if it was meant for good, how come I'm going through so much hell? How come there's so much trouble in my life? Oh, because it's been a, a, a mess up in the line. Come on, you can't drive a car too long with the wheel that's on the mess up. Because one minute you want to go straight, but it takes you over here. But I told the men to come and fix the wheel in line. So everything can go straight. Everything can go great. I don't mean you won't have trouble. Don't mean you won't have no rough night. But it only means I don't know how to handle it. When you been ready to give up, you been ready to throw in the towel. You didn't want to come to church. Some of y'all struggle to get here tonight. But God told me to tell you, it was a setup. I needed to be the release alone. And from now on, after this tonight, everything is free and easy. I don't need to be the release alone. I don't need to be the release alone. Whom the Son set free is truly free indeed. I uh, noticed something. If you don't mind me to just run around the scriptures just a little bit, uh, uh, the Bible tells me that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was back with the up against the wall because their king, their authority figure, did not know their God. And what happened was the king sat out in the creek, you know the story, and now Nebuchadnezzar, I mean, uh, uh, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, they did not listen to that. And they told the king, you can do whatever, can I just paraphrase in my own way? He said, you can do whatever you want to do. You can flip whatever you want to flip, but my God is should be able to do it. And if he's not, he's still able. Watch this. I just want to help you because I got to go. Snap at me, set in a bit to go. And a lot of y'all miss it because we get hyped up on the fire. You want fire? Uh, notice the fire got turned up to this hottest temperature. I'm going to go somewhere. And the very ones that tried to pick them in the fire burnt up before they even got in the fire. Oh, come on, because the fire wasn't set right for them. Oh, God, there's so many folks trying to pitch you into your destiny and they burn up because it was never their position to pitch you in there in the first place. Oh, you got to turn some stories around and oh, come on, make it applicable to your own self. Now notice this, before they got through in there, he said that God is able to deliver me and if he don't deliver me, he's still good. Watch this, God never brought them out the fire, but he was in the fire with them. Walking in the fire, and notice this, the very one that picked them in the fire, Walk them out the fire. What are you saying? Stop looking for God to bring you out of trouble. The very one that put you in, God said, I'm going to let them see me. And I'm going to tell them to bring you out. So that hell you've been going through for 30 years, the hell you've been going through for 10 years, the hell you went through last night, God told me to tell you, I'm getting ready to cause your enemies to see you and bring you out. Out of your way, man, and evil.
those of us, us single women, we might need to go to one of the men women and say, can I borrow your husband? So I'm going to say to Lady Doxa, can I borrow your husband for a minute? Praise God. Come on. Cause let, let, me, let me tell you why. Come on. Come on, man of God. Come on. Come. Yes, 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 yes. I see, they're not going to do it, but I, I need my blessing. Oh, y'all ain't Hallelujah. Y'all play it. Y'all play it. I'm saying it to the single women. Y'all play it. Glory be to God. He said, go, go ask them if you can borrow their husband and tell them what you need. Now, y'all may not want to speak y'all in the mic, but I will speak mine. I need, I need you to follow me. Look, I've been doing this for 13 years by myself. I need to find, I need the man to find me so he can stand right here by me. So I can sit right there and let him be who God said he is. Oh, y'all ain't, ain't saying nothing. I'm doing this because God called me to do it. Because the one that found me before, praise God, didn't want to do it. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. We don't want to be real. So, because he relinquished his position. He relinquished it. I didn't take it, man of God. He relinquished it. So I had to do it. Y'all ain't saying nothing. It ain't my choice. Jezebel, baby. I want a man of God. I want one who ain't going to leave from behind. Are y'all been talking to me in here? I'm not looking to be in control. I'm looking to undergird. No big hat, I ain't looking to be no first lady because I'm a warrior. I ain't got time for no cute hats. So I need a warrior who I can undergird. Or y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Oh, does it be bad if he got the right one? So I, I'm going to ask him to play right there. Now y'all can trip if you want to. I don't know what you're looking for. But I'm going to step out on faith in this prophetic act. Praise God. So can I borrow your husband? Come on, you come on with us. Hallelujah. Of the image of God. 
Because, see, he said, I made, in Genesis 5, he said, I made men and female. I'm just paraphrasing. Men and female, and then I called their name, their name, Adam. Mm -hmm. So that means that if you're in the image of God, you have to have the, to have the fullness of God. You also have to have the female portion of God. Nobody want to accept that. They, want, they just want to accept that he's a man and the female go sit down. Praise God. But to be, have the fullness of him, you also have the likeness of the female, that soft, generous heart. Because, see, a man will tell you, go on, go on about your business. I've had enough of you. I don't want to be bothered. But the mother constantly wooing you back in, nurturing you. So giving you support to keep pushing you out <clears throat> to where you can stand. Sometimes, you know, we, we see me, my, uh, we believe in being naked and unashamed. So forgive me if I take off my skin right now. I got a son. Ooh, my son. He, he, he you know, he has my name, but I, I say, I, I swear that he, he reminds me of my older brother because my older brother, he does things that make you think he's 12 years old. Mm -hmm. You know, you just stand back and you look at him. Me and my second brother, and we, we constantly like, who is this guy? Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that is, you know, he, he, he like the other day I asked him, he, he's working in uh, Springfield, California. Springfield, Ohio. Ohio, thank you. <laughs> anyway, I, I said, Rick, are you going to be home for the holiday? Because we was coming in and we wanted to surprise. Nobody knew we was coming. He said, why? You going to be there? I said, I just asked you, was you going to be there? Because it's the holiday. Are you going home to, to your wife? He said, uh, well, we're going to leave Tuesday. But I ain't going straight home. I ain't going home to Wednesday. I said, see, you still playing house. Hmm. You know, as a kid, how we always play house or school. You know, because your mindset ain't right. If you sitting here and you know that you got a house to go to, you better take care of your house. You better put it in. I mean, our investments are in our homes. You know, you invest in your home, you got a beautiful home. You got somewhere to go. And I like, you know, all my kids are gone now. So I like having peace. I like the quietness of my house. When they call, I know there's a little bit of havoc that may fall out behind it because they're they going to call and they, you know, their mindset, they still grown. Let me put it like that. They still grown. <laughs> Thank God that they grown. I know that's right. Jesus. Uh, I just want to uh, go over to Exodus 1 real quick. Praise God. We're going to look at Exodus 1 12. You know, I was at work and. Uh, at the same time of each day, I heard a song, and it, uh, it was, hey, you, get off my mountain. Hey, you, get off my cloud. Hey, you, get off my mountain, because you're just trying to. Bring me down. Bring me down. Praise God. Never So, let's go. Why don't you keep that in mind? One second. Start the, I'm sorry, one eight. We'll start at verse eight. And now rose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not of Joseph. Now Joseph and, and took his family in, we, we all know the story, and he became a great king, I mean a, a leader. Right? And he, he fed them through the hunger of the uh, desolate times. Now, and it says, and he said unto the people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come and let us deal wisely. That's a key word, wisely. With them, wisely means deceiving. We're going to deceive them. Praise God. And with them, let's let they multiply and come to pass that when they fall out any war, they join uh, also unto the enemy and fight against us. And so get them up out of the land. 
Therefore they did set above them taskmasters to afflict with their uh, burdens and build uh, for the Pharaoh treasures, treasure cities, uh, Pithom and Ramses. But the more they afflicted, the more they multiplied and grew. And they was grieved because of the children of Israel and the Egyptians made children of Israel to serve with rigorous. And they made their life bitter and hard, bondage and mortar and bricks and all the matters that served in the field. The field means the world. And all their service within them, they made them serve with rigorous. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives and which their name one was uh, Shiphrah and the other <coughs> with the name of uh, Pernum. And they said, when do the office of the midwife to the Hebrew women and to see them upon the stool, if it be sons, then we shall kill them. Kill, kill them. But if it's a daughter, they should live. But the midwife feared God, and they did not, as the king of Egypt commanded them, but save the men children alive. Now, what I want to say here is there are some people that have been set forth to kill the men of God to take yeah. them out of the office. But I want yeah. you to know that God has already placed some people out there to keep you alive. Yes. Yes. All right. All right. All right. Praise yes. God. Because, see, and they know who you are. One of the things that I had to do, uh, we recently uh, did a study on the Hitzos. Do anybody know about the Hitzos? H-Y-K-S-O-S. Now, the Hyksos was a group of Europeans that came down into Egypt during this time between Joseph and Moses. And they took over, they conquered the land, and took the customs, the names, and the uh, re uh, religion of the Egyptians. Not only did they take them, they also took some of the Jewish. So now, they are of a Caucasian race in reality. Praise God. So there are some people that's going to try to impersonate you. Mm. They well, come in, in, yeah. in sheep clothing. Yeah. Well. And they're going to take your names and they're going to rule over you. These are the taskmasters. Mm -hmm. Praise God. So <clears throat> we have Moses now. Moses comes, and this is 9 1. Video, let's go for each one. Because God has a job for you. <clears throat> 12 says, and he said, certainly, I will be with thee and with thee. And, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. See thee. I will send thee when thy has brought forth the people out of Egypt, and they shall serve God upon this mountain. I looked up the word mountain. That was the next one that came out. Mountain meant a high place, a lifted place, an elevated place. Heal goes with it, and it means a place of worship. So God was in his place of worship, sitting on his throne. He told Moses to go and tell the Pharaoh to have my sons come unto me where they may serve me on this mountain. Now, how can you serve a person if you're not in his presence? Mm. Because once they got to the mountain, did they go in the mountain where God was? Mm. No, they stopped at the base of the mountain. Yes. Because, see, one of the things they recognized that their hearts was not right. They did not have the, God, the heart of God, nor did they have his vision. Because, see, when you sit sitting high, you have a vision. You can see all far. I asked the men of God today, why are you sitting in the back? Yeah. Ah. Good, Pastor Mike. And I, one said, uh, I just sat back here. Mm. One said, I need to see. Mm. Now, we see that Moses, the name Moses actually means drawn. So he was to draw out some people. He was drawn out the water because God had somebody there. Now, the word tells us that Moses knew the ways of the Egyptian. Not the false Egyptian, but the true Egyptian. Not only did he know the ways of the Egyptian, he also knew the ways of the Jewish. How can you know the ways of the Jewish if you're with the Egyptians? 
Well, when he got drawn out of the water, there was somebody in, 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 in the bushes watching what was going on. Yes, yes. And he ran to the, do uh, the daughter of the Pharaoh and he said, I know somebody that could take care of him. Mm -hmm. And who did she go get? His mother. When they got his mother. Yeah, now, being in your mother's bosom, what do she do? And she sing to you and nurse you. Mm -hmm. She teaches and instructs. So she taught him who he was, what his purpose was, and what the true Egyptian was about. Because she knew. Praise God. So as Moses grew up, and he started wondering who he was, and you know, because to become a man, there's a point in time that you feel that it's more to what, what life has than of what I see. And then we get confused because we don't know what it is. Because we, yet, we have not heard from, the, from God. I went through that period. And then I, 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 I got to do something. I didn't have a job. So I decided I was going to go to the service. I had to make something of my life because I wasn't comfortable just walking around, you know, getting high, hanging out with the fellas, doing the same thing day in and day out. So I had to go find my purpose. I believe a young man needs to leave his home and find what the world has for him. Now, a daughter is, is different. I told my children, I said, I told the girls, I said, Go to college and get a key. You want to play in the street, you get a suitcase. I know, that's right. But I told my son, I said, you have to go. Because I wanted him to know that it's more in this world than what's at daddy's house. Yeah, I that. See, you can't make it on daddy's wages because daddy barely making it. And daddy's wages is for his wife. Right? But she makes sure she get hers. <laughs> Praise God. So anyway, Moses go and get the people and they stop at the base of the mountain. So they never get to, to the point of being able to worship. Now, we see that Moses married a Midianite woman, yes? Well, I had to look up that word, what it meant. It meant striking. So there's, he married into a family that kept strife going. How many of y'all got this? People that always want to call, keep confusion going. Yes, 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 yes. They always got something to say about somebody yes. or something. Now, he, he was a Levite. His father was a Levite priest. But yet he married Jephra, which was a priest of the Midianites. Okay, so being that he married another priest, they, uh, they wanted to bring, and, and remember, he was strife. So what was he doing? That ain't the way we, we do that. That ain't the way we minister here. Mm -hmm. You know, we do it this way. They didn't allow God to flow the way in which God wanted to flow. But see, God will put you in some places, some places that he wants you to see what he has for you to do. I want this in my ministry, and I want this taken out. Mm -hmm. But how do you know what the difference is if he's not teaching you himself? All right. Praise God. So you're going to have to go some places and sit. Yeah. Yeah. Before you can come into the fullness of what God has for you. I, I had that. Yes, I didn't sir. understand it. Yes, sir. I was in some places and, you know, I sat there some, while, uh, some time and I served. But God would not let me join. He would not let me join. Praise God. So now he comes to the, the Ammonites. I mean, Ammonites. Ammonites. They were people that was considered dwellers. Praise God. He told them to go on the mountain, but yet you have these people that's in the dwelling, and not now he said don't mingle with them. But yet you didn't start mingling with them. So now you live in a strife, and you got people that's constantly trying to pull you down. I want to keep you in the valley, because see, I know that there is, I don't know what it is about you, but I know there's greatness in you. I hear greatness in your voice. See, I'm the one that I like to, I got to hear what you got to say before I say anything to you. Because I want you to release the Spirit of God. Once you release the Spirit of God, then I know who you are. People say that you recognize a person by the fruit, but it takes fruit to grow. Yeah. But the Spirit of God, once you release the Spirit of God, I know who you are. Amen. And I know what you're about. Because it wasn't you that spoke to me. 
It was God that told me on you. God we told you on. Praise God. So here we are. We we living among strife and valley dwellers. They are, uh, you know, you'll never be nothing. Your mama wasn't no good. Your daddy wasn't no good. You're just like your daddy, actually. Well, no. A liar, a thief, a vagabond. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. And then they say, what's your name? Well, who are your people? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. Who are your people? That's real good. Oh, you, you know Jewish people, though, you know, that want to take everything. Mm -hmm. First of all, they weren't Jewish people. That was a religion. That was their faith. But yet, what we want to call them Jewish people. We want to be uh, prejudiced against their beliefs. But see, God wanted to bring them up and educate them. See, it's, why is it that the eagle is the only bird that runs to the storm? Everybody else runs from it. You are a people of war. And in that, it's for you to go to the war and not away from it. You become, if you run away from it, you're called a desert. Yeah. 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 Not only do he run to the storm, he goes and look into the storm. I want to see what's in there. Well, that's right. Face the fear. It might be something that I need. Huh? So what is in the in your storm? If you never went to it, how do you know what God has for you? That's right. That's right. I, you know, since I've been here, I've been seeing a lot of people, and I was telling my wife, I know them. I recognize them. I know that, that person. I haven't seen that person before. But how can I see them if I've never seen them? I ain't been here in four years. Mm -hmm. The people that was at the, at, at the restaurant, two ladies that was in there, that one came over that spoke to her, I knew her. I knew her by, by face because God showed me her. Hmm. So there's something about that. The nation that she's important to. That's right. Well, not only did I recognize their face, I recognize you too. God has greatness upon your life. Yes, yes, God. Yes, And there's some importance in the world that He's calling you into. And it's the vision in which you have that He has placed before you. Just be obedient and follow. Because, see, a lot of times we don't know what we see. All we know is that we see it. But don't be afraid to be like a, a <coughs> praise God. Help me out, Lord. Gil Gilly. Gilly. Ask God. He said, Lord, if this be you, challenge the spirit by the spirit. Don't be afraid to challenge the spirit. Because if you challenge the spirit, then you won't go wrong. Because it's not you that's doing it in the first place. Right. Right. No, it is you just saying what he said. Because the word of God said that I will put the words in your mouth. Amen. You're not the one prophesying. You're just repeating what you was told. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Then, second of all, God tells him to whisper in his ear. He, 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 he say, repeat in his ear. Practice it in his ear. Where he may not forget that when war time comes, you automatically know what to do. You know where your place is. And you can quickly fulfill your place and say, let's go. One hand they had a weapon, the other hand they had their tool. So what is it God telling you to do? Keep those people that cannot come to the mountain because he said, take off these shoes, these shoes, you're walking on holy ground. That's why they couldn't touch the mountain, because they was tainted. Yeah. They wanted to hold on to their past, yeah. things that people said about them, things that have been done to them. We teach on the box. The box is all the issues and the isms and the schisms that you that has happened to you that you have not let go. Yeah. Jesus the Christ. 
But as you take them out and put them on the altar, God will deal with them. Yes, when you come, to, because there's some people that's going to come to you and ask you this, about the same issue that you went through that you have not uh -oh. have not settled. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So how can you minister them if you have not settled wow. it yourself? Yes. 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 Right. Right. Right there. All you can do is talk through them through her. When I first came to this ministry, I came on a day that it was a woman's day. Uh oh. I didn't do it. <laughs> I had a brother at work that had talked to me about two years about coming to see about this ministry. Mm -hmm. And it was mother that was uh, teaching that day. <laughs> Bishop, I, I, she wasn't there. But they was teaching on the issues that where men has hurt women. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of women that have been hurt by men. Some fathers, brothers, cousins. Some you don't know. But they hold it on to those issues. And those issues are not to be held on, but to raise you up. Mm -hmm. To be able to take you up into the mountain. Because, see, you got to take them to the mountain to give them to them. Mm -hmm. And to give them praise for bringing you out of it. Because there's a lot that have not faded out of it. Yes. God, I thank you. Some of them never make it. Some of, some of these issues, the people are dead and gone. But you're still holding on to them. And you haven't gave God the glory of bringing you out yet. Because you're still holding on to them and talking about how he, 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 he did this to me. And God said, give it up. Because I got somebody coming to you. And you the only one could help them. To make them strong. You got to be strong to be in this ministry. Amen. Some of the places that you go, you I mean that you're going to be sent. Only you could go. What you say? We told we was going to Sacramento. I said, okay, yeah, it's a big state, you know, there's a lot to do there. And then two days later, we get a letter that say Manteca. We said, what is a Manteca? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I know that's right. <laughs> I first was told uh, uh, Ontario. It's too cold to go to Ontario. Woo. I didn't know they was talking about Ontario. Can I mean, uh, California. I'm thinking Canada. It's too cold. Or clean and cold enough. Oh, that's right. Well. You better tell the truth. But once we got there, uh, I believe within the first four days, we were in a hotel, and my wife got held down by a spirit. It was literally trying to choke her out. And God raised her up and took her to the window and said, I want to show you what's in the region. Yeah. <clears throat> Maybe a year later, she had two strokes. She had a stroke, and she was like a mile, I mean, an hour and a half from home. She drove from that, she, in the hospital. She was already at the hospital when she had it. In class. Left class, drove home, went to work two days, because she's hard-headed. I'm like, we need to go to the doctor. That third day, I had to make her go. And they came in looking at her. Diagnosed with a major stroke, and she's still walking around calling habit. <laughs> <laughs> wanting to have church in the hospital. Amen. And they come in here and talk about remarkable. Amen. Doctor said, You know God, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Year later, they had another stroke. They took her in and did a major workup on her. has told her that, once again, remarkable. Because there was no sign of neither stroke. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. But my point is, you know, everybody can't touch a mountain. They trying to pull you out your worship, out your worship mode, keeping you from getting elevated in the glory of God, being educated by him. They want to educate you on their ways, on the 
Pixel's ways. Praise God. Don't allow people to be on your mountain. <laughs> Get off my mountain. Get off my mountain. Praise God. Praise God. Don't make me sing the song. Don't make me sing the song. Because I know the words. Amen. Come on, I want you to put your hands together for the next man of God. Not 
in our time. It was in the apostles' time. In, in the, this wonderful history book. But see, we had allowed arrogance to creep in. We allowed homosexuals to creep in. We allowed self-doubt to creep in. We allowed the, the, we allowed the women folks to go forth and say, have that. Because we had so much idle time on our hands. And yet, when you see one preacher fall and another preacher fall and another preacher fall, because they have so much time on their hands, and you say, but they speak and they minister and they preach so well. And then the Lord said, but they didn't have the substance of me. I, uh, I listen, I know for a fact that I talked to a preacher that said, the, the only time you got filled with the Holy Ghost was on the day of Pentecost, and that was a one-time event, and that is no more. My God. Jesus. Wow. 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 Okay. So I became a seeker. Yeah. Why I become a seeker? Because I'm seeking his faith. Yeah. Say you seek my face with your whole heart. And so I said, I'm becoming a seeker. So I, I start setting aside the, the, the titles. I set aside the ministries. And I said, because what I un come to understand is that, Lord, when you fill me again, then that first time I didn't know. I didn't know what was happening. I had people around me that didn't know, couldn't explain what was happening. They couldn't tell that what I had opened myself up to was the glory of God. What I had, the sensation of the feelings and the knowing and my senses all became one. All that I knew and all that I could help to understand knew that something had happened to me. So I said, Lord, you, you're setting us up like you did with John. He said, yeah, John was my forerunner. We are Christ's forerunners. And yes, John baptized him into repentance. But he left a footnote. He said, but there's someone that's going to come after me that's going to baptize you in the Holy Ghost. And that with power and pride. Then you can quit resisting. Too many of us is on the defensive mode. Too many of us is keep taking a back step. Because we think that whatever our problem or situation is, it feels too great. Come on, come on. Jesus. Jesus. And the devil have shushed us to quietness. Yeah. Don't share this with nobody. Uh -oh. Jesus. Keep it to yourself. But the Lord stand ready. And he's looking for men that are willing to seek his face. Yeah. And have no shame to say, listen, I need to get filled with the Holy Ghost again. And why? When I first said that, you know, they said, I sinned. They said, oh, you weak. You did something. Why are you saying you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost? It's only a one-time event. I said, well, don't you eat three times a day? Mm -hmm. oh, that's good. Well, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Do you put gas in your car? When the hands start getting too much, you eat? Yeah. step out 
up on faith. We don't want to just close your eyes and say, take that blind walk. But because Christ is calling for us now, and place that desire in our heart now, that when you speak these words, I have no, no other sense. I, I'm, I'm, I'm without a shadow of a doubt. As the mustard seed faith, I believe with my whole heart that once when the words have been spoken, that it's going to be manifest in the physical. And yes, he is calling us. Yes, he wants us to stand up. Yes, he wants us to roar like lions. Yes, he wants us to let them know that this is no joke. Yes, he wants to charge us up, but then press the button so that they can see the light. He wants you to cancel that out. He wants you to doubt that 
He wants you to reject it. He wants you to say, oh no, that's not for me. Come on, sir. Let me put on my, my, my little suit and, 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 you know, and I'll have a form. Because he know that if you hold on to the power of God, that you can stand boldly and command, hey, it's time to let go. It's time to release it. It's time to bring it forth. And this is the time. Because we are on that timetable. Maybe nobody noticed, but we're on that timetable where all these events that is in this book is being fulfilled. But everything that he said that is going to come to pass is happening now. How can something 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 years ago tell us what's going on right now? And we are still, he is still preparing a way for us to stand strong because I read in Revelation where he said, who are these? And where, which did they come from? And he said, and these are those that come up to great tribulation who have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb till it's quieter than snow. These are those. These are the ones that at the altar when they were being slain still saying, Lord, for me to live, it's you. For me to die, it's gain. They stood with boldness. We haven't got thrown into the lion's den. Not yet. We haven't stood in front of a fireman squad. Not yet. We still wrestling with the little minor stuff that caused us to wait. And uh, Pastor, I'm going to do like in Congress. I'm going to give my extra minutes to Pastor. <laughs>
We was in a car ride. And we got, yeah, we call you not just the warrior princess, but we call you the ninja warrior. <laughs> she done went from warrior to ninja now. She stepped. As the man of God was going forth, I had to sit and kind of reflect over, well, the Holy Ghost allowed me to sit and reflect. Y'all know the scripture said, he'll bring all things back to your remembrance. And as I sat there, I said, now, and this is just me. Ain't nobody else ever done this, but this is just me. There was a time in the atmosphere like this, different men come up and preach, and they'll let the they'll, they'll let loose it. Man, that was a good word. And it was a time where it would come to be my turn that I would get up in my in my thinking. It would be I'm a you know I'm anointed. I know I can preach. Uh -huh. I know I can preach, Careful. Apostle. I, I can get down. Why? Because I heard it. <laughs> man, that was a good word. Yeah. You, man, you sure preach. I like to hear you preach. When are you preaching? Oh, I'll be preaching today. Oh, I, I got to come. They, and they told it to me. Till they got, and I didn't realize it until I had to come and sit. Yeah. And I struggled there. That's, who was that? Who was that talking? Had to, you got to come sit somewhere. You got to sit down, cause you know I had it all together, Apostle. I had it. I had all the word. I had all of it. He, said, he, he told me, I'm a home take no. Listen, but I had to come sit. And it wasn't, I'm being honest, but it wasn't until just now that I realized I'm not in competition. That's right. That's right. That's right. See, 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 everybody gave the word of God how God gave it. And so what I can do is give it how God gave it to me. So I'm not in competition. It was a time where I would be there. Because I came up in a, I, 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 was, I was offset over here for a moment. And somehow, through my disobedience, that's how, I was set here. And I kind of got reared back into what God brought me out of. Because see, well, I, I was I, I came up in that same church. Well, daddy, yeah. daddy, and uncles and folks brought me up. But but years before that, God brought my father out, mm -hmm. and so and took us and took him a whole other way. I ain't, I, I'm just I got the father that I'm in his house. What I'm gonna say, no. Mm -hmm. So I had to go that way, and so but then I came back into it to fulfill an assignment that was given by God. But then allow my, the spirits that be to shut my mouth. Uh, yeah. My wife used to tell me all the time, she said, she having all these dreams about uh, a tax, spiritual warfare that's going on where we were. And in the dream, all the time, I had my mouth closed. Because the spirit of Jezebel had shut my mouth. Oh, y'all. Okay. Uh huh. And so they didn't want the prophet. Well, they wanted the prophet, but they only wanted the prophet who they wanted the prophet by. They fought tooth and nail to keep me from doing stuff because there was a difference from me. Now, I'm not bragging on myself, but I'm just stating the fact. There was a difference with me than it was with anybody else. Why? Because they came up straight. They never came out. And they came back in. But I came out. God birthed me out of it. And then brought me back into it. So now I can see a little bit different. And I know where to help us to be. But because they didn't receive me. My mouth got shut. 
got shut. Yeah. So I'm just not going to say nothing at all. There's the answer for prophetic mountain. I got mine out of the way. Huh? I, I already said it's on, it's on, it's recorded. Yes, sir. So, but I just want to thank you. I know you did it because God told you to do it. Uh, not putting me up, but making me sit. Uh, I, I had to learn to sit down somewhere. <laughs> I'm the preacher. I'm the, I'm the great anointed. God has anointed me, and I know God has given me a gift, and, 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 and it's my calling. It's my time. And I asked her once. I said, God is calling me uh, to start a church, and she said, No. She, I want. I, I came to her. I said, Well, I just wanted to run this by you. Run it by about starting ministry, and this was when I first came. And you know what she told me? She said, well, what did God say? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I couldn't answer her because I didn't ask God. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what I did? I said, nothing because I ain't say nothing. She said, and she just looked at me and I just turned around <laughs> <laughs> and walked off. But I, I just had to get that out the way. God is a good God. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Amen. So now, we're going to go real quickly. I got you. Real quickly, if we can go to... Where do I want to go first? Oh, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Uh, we're going to go to Genesis. Let's go there. Genesis chapter Somebody took it and threw it away. I was so mad for a long time. I said, somebody took my Bible and threw my Bible away. We should have. I, and I thought about some, because she kept threatening. She said, I'm going to take it. You ain't going to know it, and it's going to be gone. And I couldn't find it. It wasn't until I looked into a uh, prophet's um, bag. I said, that's what happened. I was happy. I was happy. But uh, Genesis chapter 3. I'm going to start it up. Verse 14. And it reads, and it says, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast in the, of the field. Upon thy belly shall thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It, everybody say with me, it, it. shall bruise thy head, uh -huh. and thou shall bruise his heel. <laughs> if you go all the way over with me to Romans, the 16th chapter. Starting at the 17th verse. And it reads as though, Now I beseech you, brethren, remark them, excuse me, brethren, mark them, which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. But they that are such serve not Lord Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. <laughs> And by good words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. 
For your obedience is come abroad unto all men. I am glad, therefore, on your behalf, but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. And the thought that God gave me with that was change your confession. All right, I'm on. Uh, just tap your neighbor and say, neighbor. God said, God said, change your confession. Change your confession. Now, if we roll all the way back. Uh-oh. Oh, wait a minute. I got to go one more place. Isaiah chapter 7. Verse 15. Yeah. Let me start at verse 13. And it says, And he and he said, Hear now, hear ye now, O house of David, is it a small thing for you to weary men, but will you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Butter and honey shall he eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. Yeah. Amen. Now change your confession. <laughs> now as I, I was reading, you know, sometimes you, you go, I asked my wife, I had to ask my wife, I said, have you ever heard this before? Have I ever said anything like that before? Because, you know, it's, I'm conscious. Yeah, don't we know. Like that, I, I have to. I, I don't. Okay, I know. Sometimes God, God does re, re, regurgitate, or He will resend a word if we don't get it. <laughs> and so I was just asking. I said, I don't want to get it up, and people be looking at me strange. Like I ain't gonna say that before already. Ain't nothing new. And then because okay, that means you ain't you ain't really pressed in. Right, right, right. That's my thought. Yeah. So I had to just go on with it. I said, well, God, this is what you gave me, so let's just grow with it. And he took me over into Genesis. And now we read the story. You know the story about how God told him not to touch the tree. We know that, right? We all been in church, and we understand that. Am I correct? Amen. Amen. We family. And so then we get to the point where he handed out uh, judgments for the sin that had took place and for the disobedience. And so he done dealt with the man because uh, I'm about to roll everybody up into one ball. He done dealt with the man and he dealt with the woman. Now he dealing with sin. Okay, now since you done did this, this is your, your punishment. And so he said, it shall bruise your head. And you, you know, saying you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna hurt his heel. Mm -hmm. It, talking about Christ, mm -hmm. talking about the body of Christ as together. So that means male and female. All right. There is no sexual orientation in the spirit. Go ahead. Go ahead. There's only sons. Yes, God. Mm -hmm. That's right. He said, and to them that believe on him, to them gave he the power to become the sons. Of God. So there's not male or female, but there is sons. That's why when they ask the question, when the wife died and everybody up in heaven sort of say, uh, whose wife would she be? Well, there ain't no need for a wife. All right. And what not then? Because right. ain't no need to. We, we, at that point, we can just, at that point, what well, we have, we're in training. Go ahead. We're in training now. And the closer we get to God, the more we and the more we open our mouth and speak that thing, yes, God. the more then we you know it'll manifest. By then we will have come into the full measure. That's why he said we don't yet appear what we shall be, but we know when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Why? Because we shall see him as he is instantaneously. Yes. Are we transformed? Yes, God. Yes. Matter of fact, on the way up. Uh huh. Yeah. Beloved, I show you a mystery. We should not all sleep, but we shall be changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. Yes. Yes. We're going to 
going to be changed. We're going to see him. We're going to receive him as he is, but we're in training now. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. How do you know that? Well, let's, let's revert. I want to go one in Isaiah chapter 7. It's talking about Christ and who he is and what his name shall be. But he said, he said, butter and honey is going to be given to him to eat so he don't know what's good, what to accept. Mm -hmm. And so if he gets something better, I'll come. Good. But I want to kind of bring that in just a little bit further. Because sometimes we feel like things that we go through ain't good. All right. Uh, sometimes the things that we, that we figure that, that we go through ain't good. Um, hell could be breaking loose. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lost job. Mm -hmm. Ain't got no place to stay. I'm not saying that's you. But we thinking that that's, oh, that can't be, that's, this ain't good. This ain't, this ain't good for me. Been there, been there. Been there. But all things work together for the good. That's right. That's the word. Of them that love God and are the call according to yes. his purpose. Yes. So back yonder way, mm, yonder way, he gave a declaration that I shall bruise uh -huh. Satan's, I'm, I'm going to crush his head uh -huh. with my heel. But we don't believe that. How right. uh -oh. I know. Uh, I'm in a financial kind of straight and I've been wrecking my brain on how I'm going to do, how I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. And my wife would look up, she said, she said, let it, she said, relax. You know, let your mind go. But in my mind, I'm going, okay, God, how I'm going to do, what I'm going to do. I need this done. I don't know how I'm going to do it. And, but I don't, but in that, as you said earlier, I'm praying, but in my mind, I'm doubting at the same time. Yes. Why? Because, oh, they're going to come. They're going to take, they're going to shut this off. They're going to yes. shut that off. And, go. and we ain't going to have this and we ain't going to have that. God, you got to do something. But in that, I'm praying to God, but not praying in faith. Yes. We have been created, as we all know, we've been created in the image of God. Yes. And so, therefore, we have taken and we have some attributes of God that we have not yet utilized to the fullness of the ability that God has given us. For God can do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we shall ask or think according to the power that worketh. It ain't no outside entity. Although he is everywhere, but he's talking about what's on the inside. Yes. Listen, I'm going to give you some treasures. Yes. Oh, the scripture says we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Uh -huh. Oh, but we won't utilize what God has given us. We need to change our confession. Uh -huh. How dare we say that we are the sons of God? Uh -huh. Full of power and might and strength and, and God is hand us on our life, but we can't Lift a headache off of, as they say, off of fire. Oh, y'all oh, looking at me funny. You, we can't speak a thing and nothing happened. Why? Because we're walking in so much doubt. We don't believe who God set me on. I tell you, apostle, in prophetic mountain, a, couple, a, a month earlier, was it earlier this month? Last month. It was a month and skipped the month. Apostle Pearl had the prophets in the house. Uh -huh. And she began to speak out to the prophets. Yes. And I declare she spoke out because it was it, it was it was a time, it was God speaking and saying, it's enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's enough. You done had your mouth closed long enough. Now, I didn't hear God. Any, listen, any prophet who's a prophet have already heard God say, you ain't saying nothing. Yes. Matter of fact, before she called the, a prophetic mountain, she said, if you are a true prophet, God would already been dealing with you anyway. And so I'm saying yes. 
because he's been speaking to me, come up in the prophetic office, in the prophetic gift. You need to come up because you ain't there yet. Wow. You know how we don't really want to, because it's going to cost the prophet, it's going to cost us something to walk in that office. It's going to cost, no, no, listen, I'm talking about everybody walking away. When you get to stand by yourself, it's going to cost you something. Folks really ain't going to like you. Folks really ain't going to want to talk to you. Folks really ain't going to want to hang out with you because you a prophet and the hand of God is really on your life and you're really consecrating yourself and getting into the place where God wants you to so God start cutting stuff off. No, but we don't really want that. We, we, I got to be the center of attention. I got to have somebody wooing me. I got to have somebody stroking me and telling me that it's going to be all right, baby. and 15, it took me to a different, various scriptures, but what stuck out to me was each scripture that I went to, it talked about discerning. I know I'm, 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 I'm dealing with everybody, men and women. It's called, he said, to discern. I gave you bitter butter and honey to discern. Not that everything was going to be good, or that it would feel good to you, but it was good for you. I need you to discern it because sometimes we 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 dismissing stuff that ain't we put the stamp on Satan. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. That's Satan. That's Satan doing that. No, no, that ain't God. God ain't doing that. Uh, the first thing uh, 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 both I heard when 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 Katrina hit New Orleans, I heard a pastor, a prominent pastor that's in this city. I heard him on the radio and he said. Uh, don't y'all be called to talk about what's the prophetic if this some prophetic about uh, Katrina hitting New Orleans ain't nothing prophetic, it was just a hurricane hitting the city. Which caused me then to shut down to anything he said. I can't listen to you. Be why? Because you're not discerning. Anybody who's a prophet or anybody who have a prayer life, listen, you ain't gonna be a prophet for God to speak to you. And to show you things, listen, the old mothers used to sit off in the corner and see a whole lot. Why? Because they had a prayer life. And they would call you, baby, don't, don't, don't do that. I, listen, I, I, I used to, I, and I, I had a testimony. I said, I, I think I came up in the last little bit of the old church. I think I just caught the tail end of it. When mothers used to sit off behind the pastors. Yes. And they would and they would sit there and the whole service they'd be praying. Yes, yeah. And it's, and they and they will I used to sit there and call you over yes, and they and they'll sit you down. Baby, let me talk to you. Yes, yeah. Yes. Oh no, we don't got that in the church now. Oh, we can't tell nobody nothing now because we know it all. Yes. Now here it is, your pastor done been preaching something 30, something, something for, well, listen, we're not preaching. Let me river river river. Let me say, been saved. Uh huh. Or at least, now this going through whatever changes, whether they, they went back a little bit and then got brought them back, but that whole way, man, that whole process up until now, man, it took them about 20 something, 30 something years. Now here it is, you five years into it, got a little, just a little something. A little something. A little something. You done heard three prophecies about your destiny. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's just me. I'm the only one, right? You done heard three prophecies about your destiny and how God gonna use you and how mighty he gonna use you and I see you preaching to thousands and I see you going across seas. But there's a process to that. Now here you run back to your pastor. God is saying that I need to go over, over in Africa. And here your pastor telling you, no. It ain't time. I mean, that may be so. But not at this point, you ain't ready for it. No, I, I heard God. You might have heard him. And then to be slick about it, they won't say, a prophet told me. They'll say, God told me. Like you can't see. And say, no, you need to sit down because you ain't ready yet. But there's a, there's a process to that. But we know it all. We got it all together. Everybody know it. 
Mm -hmm. I, uh, I know it. I know it. It ain't seen nothing. And then when you get in trouble, here, yeah. oh Lord, pass the plate for me. That's what they say. circumstance that I was in, my mother came and sat down and talked to me. And she said to me, she said, you know, one thing that I, I like about you, it could, it, could, it, it's, it could be good, but then sometimes it could kind of be bad. Depending on how you want to look at it. Well, for me, depending on how I want to look at it, because I can be knuckleheaded. Oh, yeah. We all can, bro. But she said, she said, one thing I admire about you, she said, if it ain't God, you ain't moving. Oh, and I said, you're right about that. Now, sometimes, I miss God in my not moving, and it cost, it cost me something. I was almost this close on my way out of here because I ain't want to marry my wife. Tell it. Be transparent. Uh, ain't nobody ever made no mistake like that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Here God speaking to me. Listen, apostle, I was on the floor. Now, this was years, years before I even knew that she existed. We went to Sandusky. And I'm on the floor, my face to the floor. I'm crying and I'm praying. And the Lord, is, it looked like it was a tunnel vision. And her face looked to seem like it came from that wall right here. Boom. And I looked. I said, not so. I said it on the flow. In his presence, I said, not so. You know what he did? It was an apostle there. He came up to me and he said, uh, B, I, hear, I hear God saying, I hear a name. <laughs> and I hear a name and with that name I hear you saying I'll never forgive them mm. for what they did to me I couldn't receive what God had given me because I was still holding on to some stuff Jesus somebody hurt me and I'm, listen I'm young you know I got saved early but in my, in my mind I said that's my life I'm saved now. It's all about that. All I got to do is turn them 18. We about to make this happen. But God said, no. I said, no, that's my life. I, listen, you got to be careful. Because you, do you know in your own mind that you can, you can, you, you can create your own vision? Uh, listen, I ain't talking about an imagination. I'm talking about you can see your own, you said it earlier, your own vision. I went to sleep, had a dream. I seen myself marrying her. Yes, you did. Wow. <laughs> and what happened is, I walked in. We she had a, a birthday party. I walked in the door. I don't know why I'm here, but amen. Walked in the door, and then she was on another boy, young man laughing. I said, "Up, oh, that's it." <laughs> but in my mind, I said, "I'll never forgive her." Right. So I'm on the floor. I'm snotting. Coughing. No, that ain't what God. No, I ain't never heard that. He looking at me. He said, I know what I hear. And so he just looked at me like, Sabbath, you going to actually lie to me? <laughs> I said, no, I, but I had buried it so far back in there wow. until it didn't start. So I had to, that stuff had to come out first. Yeah. Let me tell you what happened. I don't, listen, maybe this is, this is helping somebody. I don't know. Go ahead, go ahead. But what happened was God brought her. I seen her. Now, out of my own, the Holy Ghost out of my own mouth said, that's your wife. You need to be, she need to be with me. And I said, oh, where did that come from? <laughs> I, like, I was looking in the window. I seen her. I said, she need to be with me, not with him. And I said, whoa, back up. <laughs> and so from that point on, we started coming around each other. Now, she wasn't saved at the time. And so my mom started going to her to get her hair done. And then she, my mom came home and she said, do you know she's saved now? Woo! <laughs> I said, well, that's good. I said, I need to see her. I said, because in my mind, because because it was so much negativity put out on me as a young man, and in the neighborhood, because I also sold drugs, but in the neighborhood, men had went to the church down the street, confessed salvation, gave their life to God. Two weeks later, they was back on the street corner selling dope. So when I went and gave my life to God and I came back saying I'm saved, oh, you'll be back in two weeks. So now, my, so I had to fight through that. I was scared. I'm like, God, I don't want to go back. I'm, I'm tired of that life. I'm, I was getting, I was killing myself. I was so sick. I used to smoke weed so much too. I was telling a young man the other day. I said I started seeing black blotches. Jesus. Forming on my body. I, it was like I was seeing when the God was allowing me to see my flesh decay before my very eyes. Jesus. Uh -huh. And 
so in my mind, I said, I got to encourage her to keep going because we don't, you know, ain't nobody, you know, they need to go. You need to come on. You young, you need to come on. Yeah. And next thing I know, yeah. somebody saying, you know, we need to, she, she said, and the Lord told me she's going to ask you to go out and eat or whatever. And I said, okay, God, what am I going to do with that? <laughs> I said, I don't know, I don't, I don't know how to handle that. What am I do? And he ain't say a word. He told me that and didn't say nothing else. And so, make a long story short, the marriage, marriage, where marriage came up, but I had an issue because I was religious. God, you know, she's been married already. She ain't a virgin. Tell it, tell it, tell it. You got to help me. She, she ain't a virgin. And so I said, what you talking about? And so God struck every excuse away from me. So to the point to where I was sick, I, I think I was about, I weighed 165 pounds then. And when we got married, I had to be maybe 140, 135 pounds, something like that. I was this big. I don't think I was that small. Uh, or put it this way, I was wearing a size 29 in the waist. Yeah, I was yeah, I was thin. But all that came from disobedience to what God was calling me uh to do. So but you know what and you know, but there was a there was a whole process, but so but I had to I, I you had to get to a place where you uh could just or could just could discern. Yes, but we have, as, as I said, yeah, that's where I want to go. We got to change our confession. Sometimes we, like I said, we hold on to stuff, and we confessing, we confessing God, and we confessing that we say we confessing stuff, but we ain't living up to it. Go ahead. Uh, God gave me a word. Something. I don't want to think I'm picking on nobody, but He gave me a word uh, earlier this year. He said, "You're a hypocrite." Uh-huh. <laughs> I said, I'm a hypocrite. He said, yeah. He said, because the very thing that you keep talking about the other folks doing, you done, you done switched off. Now, here you is. You're supposed to be the example. So now I done, I done switched, and now I'm in that same spot. So then now how can I be effective in the ministry, or how can I walk in the authority of Christ and I'm in the same position, so now I gotta change my whole confession. Confession just ain't words out of your mouth, but it's your actions, it's your conversation. Conversation is your lifestyle. What are you doing in your life? So now let me let me bring it to a close. Yes, sir. God pronounced in Genesis the same thing he pronounced over in Romans. But in order to get to Roman, now he gave the word there. But in order to get to Roman, there's a process that we got to go through, and it's called obedience. Um, as I researched it, at any, if you can, I don't care who you are, you can take and cross reference Genesis 3 and 15, and every time you come to it, or oh, your cross reference scriptures, you will find it where it says Jesus. You'll see the two words, Jesus, obedience. You'll see Jesus, and you'll see obedience. You'll see Jesus, and you'll see obedience. Which, in other words, in order to overcome, or in order to walk in it, you got to be obedient. You got to bring yourself to a sense of obedience to God. Listen, even if your obedience means it's, it's going to cost you, we don't want to pay the price for nothing. Y'all not saying nothing to me. Hallelujah. We don't want to pay the price for the anointing. We want the anointing. Yeah, God, I want us to be able to speak as the man of God said. I want to be able to speak and it manifest. But we don't want to go through the process of it doing to get to the place of us speaking and manifesting. What are you saying, preacher? So that means I got to be in a hard spot where I don't have no money. Where my body is sick. Hallelujah. And things is just topping the turvy upside down. And so that I'm putting in a place where I'm forced to use what God has given me. So if God has placed in me the word of God, and I'm just sitting 
know, they're saying, oh, I wish God would do something. God, you got to do something. No. We wait on God, as the man that I said earlier, we wait on God to do a lot of stuff that he's already equipped us to do himself. We wait on God to do it. Yes, God. We wait on God to do it. We wait on a presbytery. Yeah, we wait on the apostle to come. We wait on a prophet to come to speak over our life. We wait upon him for the heck. Hallelujah. Some of us go to the doctor just, hallelujah, just to get the pill and then get the glory. But God is calling you now. You can go to the doctor. That's fine. And see what's wrong. But after you see what's wrong, speak over your own self. Lay hands over your own self. And then walk in the healing of God. All of us see undo. We got to walk in and we got to change our confession. Now all see undo. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. There's no more time for us. The time is going short. And yet the earth is crying out for the sons of God, hallelujah, to manifest themselves. But we too busy hiding. Y'all quiet, y'all looking at me like I'm saying something. We too busy being quiet. We, we hiding somewhere. We off in the corner. We can come to service every Sunday, every Wednesday, every Thursday night, every Sunday night, every revival. But yet we still hiding. And they got no, ain't got nothing, ain't been nowhere. Ain't got nothing with the anointing. Hallelujah, but it's time now. It's, it's, it's time now to change your confession. If you don't do it, let's do it then. Let's go ahead and let's do it. No matter what the cost is. No matter what the cost is. Now, I want to end it here with this. Oh, man. I want to end it with this. There were two things that God said here. Over in Romans, he said, I'm going to bruise shortly. And I wanted to encourage some because some of us sitting here are at the very, it's like you at the cusp, you at the very edge of a breakthrough. And you're, you're right there at the edge of it. But then, or oh, let me say this, sometimes we get there and we're there at the edge of it, but then because something else presents itself, then we back away. But God's saying, this time, because it's going to come around again. This time, go through it. Okay, I guess that's, that's just for me in the house. Y'all quiet. No, sir. Go through it. Y'all know who, y'all know how y'all are. I don't live in the house with you. I don't be in your mind. But you know how you are. It got too hot and you said, no. Uh -uh. But it's coming back around again. But this time God is saying, go through it. Jesus, help me. This whole day, yes. it started off with declaring over your own life. Yes. And it just went on and exploded. Yes, it did. And I want to say this is the overflow. Yes. It just went on and, and just it, it just exploded. But this, yes, I want to do this. Because this is what now. God showed me this today. We were here. We on level ground. I'm right here. And each time, I don't know if nobody else see this, saw this, or noticed this in service, but it's, it just seemed like at different moments we went to another place. So we went here, and then we went here. But we didn't stop here. Like if I stood up on the chair, we went up here. Uh -huh. And we went up just a little bit 
higher. So now we're in a whole different place now. Yes. Okay, maybe if I was up, ha! You're in a different place. Oh, I get it, I get it, I get it. They don't believe it. They don't believe it. Listen, I got it. We are, in, I am in a different place in the spirit. telling you because as man oh my lord Jesus uh, I'm understanding now what God is doing apostle said it I think a couple weeks ago about the alignment with the apostles and the prophets walking together I feel apostle I feel and, and it's not when I say I feel it's not so much as a feeling naturally, but I can discern that I'm moving to another place. Because God has some things for us to do. Body of Christ if it let it start, as they say, let it be a revival and let, the, let it begin with me. For years we've been walking around carrying the title or the stamp as Christians. For years we've been walking around carrying the title as the body of Christ, but not showing no fruit or no evidence of it. But now God is forcing He will cause havoc to get you to hear him. And so now it's time for us. Now look, we hear now. Well, let me ask this. Well, let me let me just talk about me. I'm here now. And to the whoever else is in the room that is here now with me. to come and bring you back here. Oh yeah, he coming to test your anger again. Yeah, he coming. He coming to see if, if you really are in that place that you declaring. Now, I, saw, I said me. Now, everybody else raised their hand. I said me. But he coming after that. And the warfare is intense. But do not allow it. You're in another place now. Utilize the weapons of God. Yes, God. For the weapons of your warfare are not carnal. But they are mighty through God that worketh in you. Tap your neighbor one more time and say, Neighbor, you need to change your confession. No, matter of fact, no, we need to shift it from change your confession. Tell your neighbor, Neighbor, Because I can't speak for everybody. I'm not, because then you, some of y'all be lying if y'all said that. I'm going to do something, and if, if you follow me, then that's on you. Uh, my, 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 my,